Welcome back to another episode of Boom and Bust. I'm your host, Terry, and today continuing our all-pro film session series with Stefan Gilmore, cornerback from the New England Patriots. Uh, Stefan Gilmore out of South Carolina has been a real good veteran for a while. I remember coming out that he wasn't super flashy as far as athleticism, like, you know, nothing that was off the charts or anything like that, but had really good technique and just a real tough-nosed player. I think he started out hot and then just kind of got lost in the shuffle in Buffalo, but has reemerged lately as like a really premier corner. And again, a guy that's always, I think, been pretty good, maybe just wasn't on a team that had the, you know, the national attention, but um, yeah, been a terrific pick. So uh, anyway, like usual, I'm going through the first team all pro roster, just looking at some plays and uh, breaking down what I see and then confirming if I feel like it's all pro status at the end. So so for Stefan, we'll be looking at uh, uh, Stefan. Is it Stefan? Stefan. Uh, we'll be looking at some interceptions as well as some incomplete passes. So let's go ahead and get this started. And we start in week 17 with the Jets and then working our way down. All right, so Gilmore is at the bottom of your screen in a press position. One-on-one -on -one with the receiver, and he is going solo. So incomplete pass. Again, no safety help over the top. And we see him take the outside. We'll see him uh, take the outside technique. He'll have the receiver pinned in. No jam, just reacting to him. And again, just really a uh, physical play. You know, not letting the receiver bully him or anything. You'll you'll see from the beginning. That he's only going to give the receiver one option. So I'm I'm taking this inside. If you come inside, you got to cross my face. So now he's just running with him. It's not a vertical route. Easy for him to sit on. And then you can't see up close, but uh, attacks the hands. As soon as the hands show to catch the ball, breaks the pass up. We'll see from the end zone. Maybe you can see a little better him breaking the pass up. Maybe not. But again, just good timing, good ball skills, and the ability to play through a receiver's hands, which is a, is a skill that not all corners are good at. So again, let's see. Steph is at the bottom of your screen. One-on-one -on -one in coverage. Gets a break up again, and we'll go through that slow-mo. So this is a man coverage, blitz. Safety blitz is off the edge. So again, giving them one way, and then tracking the receiver well. Recovering on the route, playing through the hip. Gets a little blurry at the end. What breaks up the pass, and hopefully we can see a little better from the end zone view. So again, riding the hip, recovers, and doesn't even see the, uh, the ball. Again, this is just good instincts and reaction off the receiver. He sees the receiver gets ready to catch. He gets his hands up. Good technique. Not interfering on the receiver. Just blocking his path to the ball. Great instincts and great reaction time. All right, so against the Steelers. Down at the bottom of your screen. Matched up with AB. We got a break up there. And you see the ball is thrown behind a little bit. But again, shadow technique, just reacting. 
plant close by the hip so then he could make a play. Now, that's just a coverage thing. I don't really like that. Uh, again, I don't know the exact coverage, but I know that he doesn't have a lot of help inside as this play progresses. So if I'm a corner, I'm expecting this help inside and that linebacker just doesn't get enough depth. So if that passes on time, AB is gone, but that's not really Stefan Gilmore's fault. He's expecting help to the inside and he's playing that outside technique. But still good recovery speed. Uh, once the ball was thrown behind, it was good recovery speed for him to uh, make it back and break that play up. So Gilmore's I guess that ended up being an interception. That was a little confusing. We'll go through it again. So Gilmore is on the bunch side. Looks like he's got the outside receiver. Whoever that is. And good recovery, good use of the hands within five yards. But then it just becomes a pick play where that receiver is just trying to block and give A.B. A, a space to run. And Gilmore just kind of ends up following that block right into the path of the ball, breaking it up, allowing his uh, teammate to get the interception. A little bit of luck. Not going to say, like, it was a great play. <laughs> it was an illegal play by the offense anyway, but still. All right, so Gilmore at the top of the screen. Again, no safety help over the top. This time he's playing off coverage. Probably respects the speed of this receiver a little more. And that could have been a pick six. And you just see the patience. Not even backpedaling. Just trusting his own athleticism. Trusting his eyes. Planting and driving on the ball. Any corner that's a top corner has the ability to break down, plant, and drive on the ball very quickly. Because that's how you turn incomplete passes to interceptions. A good amount of corners could break that up. Not all corners could jump that for an interception. He was in position to do it, didn't make the catch, but still. All right, so at the bottom of the screen against the Jets again. Gilmore's playing off. More like a quarter's coverage. The safety wasn't really playing the deep. But Gilmore has deep on this receiver. And we're going to see him shuffle out of here. Again, probably respects the speed of the receiver. Gets right into his speed turn. Stays over the top the entire time. And based off where the receiver is going, he just trails over to the middle of the field with him. And the big play is the ball skills. Uh, tracking the ball, going up, attacking it, and getting it. And then, of course, that's just a bad throw. But... You got to be in position to capitalize on bad throws. That's what uh, good defensive backs do. And linebackers. All right, so next play, Jets again. This time, Patriots are in the red zone, top of the screen. Gilmore, one-on-one. -on -one. Looks like we got an incomplete pass. And again, you got these slants, and that's that's always the difficult part. Now, your in man coverage here. So it'll be interesting to see how he plays this. He's not all the way off, but not pressed either. He's playing about halfway and drives on the ball well, but I would say he drifted a little too far to start off with because that, that distance. Once he drifts off that distance, he's creating this space inside. Now he has the speed to break on it, 
but that could have very easily been a touchdown. So, but when you're in those one on one situations, especially in the short area, you know, you got to have a lot of uh, quick reaction because these guys could go inside, vertical, or outside. So, against the Packers. Let's see, Gilmore's at the top of the screen. No, he's not. I take it back. Gilmore's in the slot. There we go. So Gilmore's right here. We got man coverage. Can't see exactly who he's covering. Might be Devontae Adams. So in man coverage, got safety help in a short area. He's with him, and his own man really kind of messes him up, but he recovers. And again, that's that's a good skill to have because now he's in recovery mode, so he can't necessarily see the ball or have time to look and see the ball. So since he's in recovery mode, what he has to do is, again, react to the receiver. And that's a purpose rub route, but you got to react to the receiver now. You can kind of see here he's going to react to the hands of the receiver going up for the ball and not necessarily reacting to the ball. But again, it takes good timing and reaction to then play through that receiver's hands and cause an incomplete pass. So, yeah, that's Devontae Adams, and we'll see if we can see the actual pass break up. So, the ball's in flight, and, yeah, you see, again, reacting to the hands and selling out to using his explosion, leaping ability, and extension to get his hands in position to break it up. And that's just great timing. And so you can recover with, with speed, of course, but you also can recover with ball skill ability like that, where you don't necessarily have to be in position to affect the pass. So Gilmore's in man coverage again, following Benjamin. And it seems like they've put him on the best receivers, which is a huge thing. We know about star coverage. You know, being one on one with the best, uh, the team's best receiver and how huge that is for coverage because that allows you to do a lot of things. So now Kelvin's not a vertical threat. So he's going to be able to press up with him, stay in his hip pocket. And we'll see it again. Gets his head around, but really just reacts to the receiver. Has the explosion and ability to go up with him and play through his hands. And that's a big time skill that you rarely see from a, a, a college corner. And we know most time corners aren't great in college because, yeah, defense is just different and they got a lot more rules. And so a lot of times corners come out just used to mugging receivers down the field or interfering. And in the NFL, you can't do that. So you got to have a lot more skill and ability. And you can see Gilmore is just really adept at playing through people's hands and reacting. Oh, I know a Bears thing was on here. Oh. <laughs> so Gilmore is at the top of the screen. Another pass breakup. And again, so out of not a stack formation per se, but a close formation. Usually set up to do some type of misdirection, give you a good release. So Gilmore is on Allen Robinson, our best receiver. He's staring down the quarterback right now. Releases, reads the release, gets in position, a little bit of a rub route they tried. But again, good reaction time and then the ball skills to go up, to track it, to locate it, 
and then go up and make a play on it. Because you could have all those other skills to read it, but then don't have the athleticism to go up and make a play, and that's when you get mossed by somebody. And not saying that Stefan Gilmore mosses anybody, but a corner with lesser ability could get mossed in those particular situations. So top of the screen. Man coverage again. And Gilmore gets beat pretty badly. Might have just been protecting the outside a little too much. Either way, Sammy Watkins gets inside of him. And it was a nice little nod by Sammy. Which, again, you see the recovery speed. You see that he's able to track that uh, pass down. And so all the things you need from a top corner, from IQ to recovery speed to reaction time to plan and drive ability, you're seeing it here from Gilmore. And he's really good at playing through the hands like we're like on time, not early, not coming through and, you know, interfering with a receiver, but really timing it up, at least on these plays that we got to see him break them up. So now in the stack again, he's off. I don't know who their top receiver was. <laughs> and I guess he ended up dropping that. those slants man I tell you it, it it actually really confuses me how the league is so big on plays over the middle right now and defenses so often give up the the middle zone they're not every defense of course but you know you see the safety up here so linebackers got, you know, it's a play action. I get it, but yeah, I don't know. That's just the area you want to protect, but it is hard on play action. I'll give you that. But still, there's just times you see where like that space is open far too often. All right. So against the Colts again, Gilmore again over the slot against the stack, reads the release. And that could have been an interception. I think that's a smart pass by Luck because it's so underthrown that Gilmore couldn't get there because if it was on time, he would have picked that off. But you just see the good reaction time here. So now he's shuffling. He's got the inside cut off. He's breaking outside. I'm driving. Okay, now he's going back vertical. Get my head turned around. I should be looking for the ball because he's looking for the ball. And again, it was underthrown, but Gilmore is able to be physical enough at the point of the catch and make him drop the ball. That's big time. All right, so let's see. Colts again. Gilmore at the bottom of the screen. No safety over the top. On bell coverage. Peels off his route and makes an interception. Now let's see here. Yeah, so they're in the zone. I don't know if he's in the zone, but the other side is in the zone. I'm guessing he's in the zone. So now he's in bell coverage. He's got this over deep. This, you know, they got the flats. He's passing off. So this is a zone. And he just sees somebody coming into that zone. Peels off. And, and really, it looked like he dropped it, actually. Not sure. But even really, his zone is deep because there's one safety. So more than likely, he has the deep third. So his responsibility is this guy. But... Just looking at the quarterback eyes in the zone and making a play. Because in the zone, you're reading the quarterback, not really the man. And so if he's looking towards the quarterback and he sees him getting ready to make that pass, 
that's just the play where he uh, tries to be a playmaker, and yeah, he dropped a hand catch that. I'm surprised we ain't seen any interceptions yet, to be honest. I'm not sure how many he had. So Texans, this is the last game I know that much. Um, I wonder, did he have? I'm sure he had at least one interception. So Gilmore at the top of the screen, playing off coverage, respecting the speed. Across the middle. Ball is late, so it gives him time to recover along with everybody else, and then break that play up. Now, I'd be interested to see if he played that a little tighter, if he would have been able to stay with D-Hop, but as you can see, he respected that speed a little too much to try to bump and run with him. All right, so Texans again, and this might be the last play. So he's off. Hopkins is going across the middle, excuse me. So then he floats over to the other receiver, makes an interception. And again, that's just the zone. He's not going to chase D Hop. D Hop has ran into somebody else's zone. And the thing that I like is that he's not just standing here in the middle covering green grass. You see so many safeties and players just stand there and cover nothing. It's like, okay, well, if nothing is over here where I'm at, that means something's probably over there. And so he goes and finds work. And that's what I like. Go find some work. Go be around the ball. And it paid off. Made an interception. So nice play there. So I'm going to end it right there. And now I'm curious, actually... I'm about to go, I'm about to look up his stats uh, because I would have a hard time believing he only had one interception. But, I mean, it's possible. It's not all about stats, which I like about the All-Pro. Uh, says he had two interceptions, so not sure why we didn't see that other play, but anyway. One of his biggest interceptions was in the Super Bowl. And if you watch that, we all know <laughs> that play. So uh, all pro stats, definitely, definitely. Again, I mean, you go through these these uh, film sessions and when you're able to identify like certain traits that you don't see often in players, that's how you know you're dealing with somebody that's worthy of all pro. So uh, like I said, great technique, very physical and tough but also good athleticism as well. So go to the comment section. Let me know what you think about Stefan Gilmore. Uh, is it Stefan Gilmore? It's Stefan. I keep saying Stefan. Stefan Gilmore. Share it around. Get the conversation started. Thumbs up, subscribe, and thank you for listening.